Hi, man, Joe Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. I finally got round to looking at some electronics. It's a problem for me. It's in the winter now and it's cold and I don't really... I start to slow down. I'm going to be honest with you. I start to slow down something chronic. So we have a few bits here. This is... looks like a power amplifier. This is a infrared sound transmitting thing. So I remember that much from those two. This thing is a total mystery to me right now. Although I can see an infrared LED, so it's got a relay. So that might be an infrared relay switch, which is kind of interesting. And this one, which I cannot tell what it is at all. So that's the one we're going to be making today. It's a cold Sunday. Can't think of anything better to do than make a video for you guys. But it's my pleasure, my pleasure. Let's get into this kit. Let's open up this bad boy and see what we've got. I'm being a bit more violent with it because it's uh, a bit well packed, actually. Ah, this is a really big PCB. It's got a big PCB in here. And a whole bunch of resistors. Oh, it's a clock. I can tell you it's a clock with good authority because I can see on the PCB here a number of markings. Look at the top here. Hour, minute, second, 5 to 12 volts. Beautiful. This should be a bit of fun, shouldn't it? An AT89C2051 chip. I don't know what that is. Is it an Atmel chip pre-programmed? A bit like a PIC type thing. Maybe the instructions will tell us, but they really, really do. Um, not. They don't tell us much, but it's quite interesting here. There's four LEDs here too, so maybe it has a sort of flashing alarm. Definitely a buzzer on it. Oh, it's quite intriguing. I think we should just turn on the old soldering iron, which I just have, and uh, start building because I'm very, very excited about this. A few bent pins on those seven segment displays. Now I've got boxes of seven segment displays, so I'm gonna have to do a project soon when I uh, eventually get round to finishing. I've got just off camera that arcade sequencer thing you've seen all loads of times. Just waiting for part to that. I really um, have to limit myself because I've probably got about five projects on the go and I sort of sometimes film them, stop, start, and I just run out of space. And I've really got a load of Atari ST things I really want to get, off, you know, get going on because I want to play it and the Atari ST is just too good to sort of rush. So I don't want to just do a random little video every now and then on that. I want to sort of crack on with the Atari ST stuff and just do it properly for you at home who are interested in Atari ST. Um, so in the meantime, yeah, I'm just going to do these small projects that hopefully will not take me too long. And I'm planning, planning on, whoa! Sorry, just lost my chip there. Planning on not taking, uh, I'm gonna time myself. If I can do this in half an hour, I'd be pretty pleased. I think it's a, looks like a half an hour type kit. If you have to debug though, of course, that can really eat into your time. So I'm just gonna place the chip holder and I think the seven segment screens. If you're putting these in, please make sure that you've got the dot. You see the dots by the eights around, right way around, the decimal points, or you're gonna really be unhappy about that. I'm just wiggling, wiggling these. So these should be interesting when they're running because when I used to design circuits using seven segments displays, there's quite a lot of ways of driving these, especially if you've got a microcontroller. So if you can consider them, like these are double displays, right? So there's one, two, there's eight. You need eight IO pins effectively to drive these. So you've got loads of ways of sort of multiplexing those. So for each screen, you might use a set, another pin and you might just go shine this one, shine this one, shine this one, shine this like that in order and multiplex them. So write the byte out to this, show it for a few uh, milliseconds, then you know, move it. And to the eye, it all looks like a constant thing because of the persistence of vision in your eyeballs. Ah, okay, lost the chip holder there, but okay, no worries. And I bent it up while I did that. Um, yeah, because of the persistence of vision in your eyeballs, it uh, looks like a sort of seamless thing. Um, but yeah, you can get constant ways of driving the screen if you're prepared to sacrifice more pins or you buy particular ICs that will let you do that. So I'm gonna, as we're building this, we might be able to figure out what they've done here, but I'm 
guessing it's probably just as the first way I've described. And you'll normally know by the way that the resistors are because if you want them to be constantly bright, each IO line effectively will need a resistor for the LED. If they're uh, being a bit lazy, they might just have one resistor for the whole, on, the whole, on the ground of all of the LEDs or the voltage source, depending on how the uh, seven segments wired. Um, and you'll notice that because then as you get more and more segments showing on the screen, they'll get dimmer and dimmer. But judging from the whole sort of massive pack of resistors that have come with this, they've probably gone for a resistor each. They could have used a sort of resistor array, like a looks like an IC and it's just a bunch of resistors in one package, but they seem to have gone for separates. Might be a bit cheaper, but probably also might be a bit more educational and a bit more practice getting you to solder each one in turn. So I'm just piling on through these. It's a little bit irritating because the board is rocking. Let's try this way around. Yeah, that will do nicely. So I'm going to look through here. I'm not sure how they're doing the timing for the chip. So either it's got a built-in oscillator or it's using a resistor capacitor. So that'll be interesting in terms of its timing. So it does seem to be a clock because it does have hour, minute, seconds, although it does have a buzzer. So maybe it could just be a countdown timer. So I don't really know which it is. If it's a countdown timer, it probably doesn't have to be quite as accurate because it's only going to count down for whatever you've set it, which probably would be a maximum of 24 hours. So if it's accurate enough within a 24 hour time span, they'll have got away with it, won't they? Not like plus or minus, you know, one second per month or something. Right, just side cuts nicely trimmed off all of those now. Yep, they're good. Let's get this chip carrier in. So you've got three switches there. Be interesting to see how they've wired these up, by the way, if it's sort of hours, minutes, seconds adjust, or if it's far more complicated with menus and things. Hopefully not too complicated, we don't have instructions on that. Although even in the native tongue of the instructions, and I'm gonna make a big assumption, say it's Chinese, because uh, that's where I got the kits from. Um, no instructions on that too, so they're probably, must be super simple. That's what I'm gonna hope, they're super simple. So let's get this IC carrier in, just very gently. I'm gonna place that down. I, I don't wanna just manhandle this anymore. I just wanna get on and build it. So you know that I always have trouble with resistors. Fortunately, it looks like there's only a couple of values here, so we shouldn't get too stuck. Okay, almost there. Yeah, that was some good, good soldering uh, action there. So there's our IC carrier. I'm not going to put the chip in right now. We don't need it in there. So looking here though, they've got these 8550, which I'm going to look on their diagram are these sort of transistors here. So I wonder what they're doing. So the data lines, yeah, so the data lines are coming from the IC to these. And look, these transistors I think are, um, they're sort of PMP ones I think, yeah. They're just sort of pull, giving it, pulling it to ground or something. Interesting. I wonder if they're all the same kind, because according to the diagram, it looked like there might be a few different kinds. Although looking at these, it does say 8550 on the board. Let's just get them out of the way, seeing as they may or may not have an issue. By the way, look, 12 megahertz crystal there. That's where it's getting its timing, so at least we sort that out. So this is the S8550 transistor. Hopefully they've provided us with everything. I like how there's a zero value resistor there, which is just a, basically a jumper. Okay, the transistor legs are a bit mauled. There, we got them in anyway. Let's check this one out again. This is an 8550. Now we're going to try to bend its middle lead back at the edge of the PCB. Here we go. I wonder how long before clocks will be totally defunct and everybody will just be using the ones on their phone. I mean, to be honest, the use case for a watch is pretty uh, limited. I 
you know, I, I kind of use them because they're still good for you know sports when you need a timepiece doing sports but uh, apart from that unless the watch is measuring and doing all sorts of metrics or something it's just not worth having I expect in the uh, future those sorts of timepieces will just become totally defunct I mean I don't know how Apple's getting on with their watch I know Andro Android have sort of suffered and are reinventing it every uh, two minutes there's sort of a new Android gear I think that's what they call it. Um, I do have one. They're quite nifty, but again, they're just so pointless because you've got your phone in your pocket and have to have your phone in your pocket. They are talking about putting these. Um, Woohoo! Seven eight L O five. By the way, that what that was. That's a power regulator. That does not belong there. They are talking about putting LTE into the watches themselves. They can be used totally standalone. And when that happens, I will probably get one of those. And the reason is. When I go running, I would like to have something just to keep me a bit safe. I do really like running actually without anything. I recently sort of tried um, running without my phone and just an MP MP3 player, one of those, that really little simple Sony one I put in an earlier video, uh, with just a bit of you know AFID uh, twin on it, or a AFID, Aphex, I was just sort of calling them AFID twin for a laugh and now that's stuck. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's kind of liberating because you not to carry a six inch display sort of telephone in your pocket extra weight so yeah I'd, I'd be all for the sort of watch because I'm, I'm already wearing a watch anyway for running how that would work though again with the ecosystem of my Garmin I know it wouldn't work so I would have to uh, maybe wear a watch on each wrist which is slightly more annoying but perhaps it would balance them out so just putting the 7805 which is a power regulator so where you saw the input voltage it said 5 volts to 12 volts the reason it can do that is because it's turning it all to 5 volts internally anyway and I'm guessing these aren't going to be using too much current so it won't get too hot if you're giving it a 12 volts but they're great actually those 7805 they come in all sorts of flavors depending on what voltage you need it to sort of go to and have quite a wide input range there we go, almost there. Right, so that's one side. We can just get these uh, last bits of these transistors done. We can move on. Another two more. Crikey. That's quite a lot. It's quite the forest of legs to cut off. So I'm just going to fire these off into the edge of the desk and I'm going to have to have a big old clean of this. This vacation, perhaps this holiday, I'll have to uh, really set down and give the whole back office a once over. Get rid of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff this year. I've generated a heck of a lot of detritus in here. All of these videos obviously come at a price when you're uh, reviewing TAT LEDs there. Let's sort this out. So what's nice and simple guys, I think switches are always a bit of fun and not too taxing for me. Let's see which way around they go. Hopefully, generally they only go round one way. They're slightly longer on one edge than the other. Yes, these sort of tack switches, so they'll only go in one way. You can't go too far wrong with those. Post those through. So you've got three there, and that's all you need. That's your whole interface. Ah, he said crunching one up. Bit of a cruncher there, bit of a cruncher. Let's hope it's not too important, that leg, just in case I snap it off now. No, he's all right. Sort of just distracted a little bit here. You've got DC 5 volts 12, but here you've got in and ground here bell what in and ground is some sort of external control i'll have to look at that circuit diagram i've really 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 bent up this uh, switch leg it does not want to uh, does not want to compute with me excuse me a moment if you can't see anything on the camera but i'm gonna have to get in real close there we go s1 s2 s3 ready to go ready to rock and rumble Solder those in place and move on. 
I've got uh, one of those spring mount soldering iron holders to the right of me and it's uh, it's doing a heck of a good job reverberating it's I give it a bit of a twang taking off the soldering iron it's still going in the corner of my eye very distracting it's doing that okay good switches are in So four LEDs here, two 1K resistors, a bunch of 220s and a 10K. So we've got two values of resistor here that are in cards. So we can just try to work which those ones out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six. So there should be seven 220s and there's seven of these and there's no other thing. So I'm gonna assume these are the 220s. I'm just gonna go totally uh, throw caution to the wind and just throw these straight in let's see if I'm wrong or right there's also a zero R there and I'm hoping that they actually haven't provided a zero ohm resistor I'll just you'll be required to make your own wire jumper because that's a bit more understandable post that in two there's no good way of doing this unfortunately you just kind of I'm going to try to bend all of them at once and I'm sure I'm going to regret doing that in fact I am I'm just going to half bend these get in get in get in get in get in get in so these are to limit the current that the LEDs take because of course LEDs will just keep on going. They'll take all they can get until they burn themselves out. So that's why you always see LEDs in most circuits. Sorry, LEDs. Resistors in most circuits involving LEDs. Although you also do see LEDs in most circuits because they're obviously the fashion right now. I think since blue LEDs came out you tend to be pretty ubiquitous used absolutely everywhere right so they're all in now interestingly you can see on this side the area that the uh, that other zero R is trying to jump so they save themselves a bit of a routing job by doing that it's like a jungle in here going to inspect the other side of the PCB to make sure that they're all look at that glad I did can you see there's a, a very different heights going on here so I'm just gonna put my finger on the back and sort of gingerly push a few of these yeah they're all sitting down now How are we doing for time? 18 minutes, so that's uh, my target of half an hour. Could be looking a little bit optimistic at the moment, but we'll just have to keep going. Reason being, I think the worst could be behind us. Right, so what I'm going to do now and so it seems like a good opportunity to do it is make our zero our link so if you see a zero on a PCB or a zero resistor oh actually there is a zero resistor here there you go that's actually a zero resistor which is just a, a jumper it doesn't actually do anything there's no real resistance it's just a component that exists so that a machine can go and plop that in so I'm going to pretend I'm the machine and plop it in too. That's really unusual. I really would not have expected them to bother to include that. But that's pretty good. I mean, that's testament to the uh, quality of these kits, I guess. You know, you pay pretty much next to nothing for them. And you get that sort of uh, level of detail. Very impressive. Right, I see it here in the corner of my eye. Let's just go straight for the 12 megahertz crystal because it's it's nice looks different can't really go wrong in its placement there's only one place that thing could go in 
something interesting with crystals if you're ever dealing with them. Have a look on the data sheet for the microcontroller that you're using or component that you're using because they do come in a few different flavors and it's to do it seems with how the crystal is cut if I was you know recall you know there's some sort of way the crystals prepared means it vibrates or does its crystally things in a slightly different way and if you use the wrong crystal you're basically stuffed so what do you want to do next resistors or buzzers I think Maybe electrolytic caps actually. We've got a 10 UF here in my right hand and a 10 microfarad in my left too, so that's pretty convenient. Just pop those straight in where they need to go. Clearly marked on the PCB. I like that. Saves me thinking. Can you imagine your job is just making these in a factory? Probably like the Apple factory in uh, 30 years ago or something, you'd have had to do something like this. I wonder what they do now, to be honest with you. You do hear a lot about Apple factory workers, all sorts of things going on unpleasant out there. Um, but surely they're not assembling things by hand. Or if they are, it's, it's got to be higher end of the value chain. 30, 30, 104, and 104. So 30 picofarads, 30 picofarads, 104, 104. So we can see exactly where they go, fortunately. So the 30 picofarads are around the crystal. They're always around the crystals normally, doing something with a noise. One day I'll learn what they do. But they're always in the reference design, so we just put them in. Ours is not to reason why. They're probably there just to clean up the signal somewhat. You'll get these sort of weird effects in your circuits where your crystal won't fire. You'll notice there's no signal coming out. Pop something like that in and it might just work. That's usually the thing. The black magic of why it works is lost on me. 104 and 104. I think at this point we're not going to do our half an hour. Not going to be too far off it though. Oh, I do apologise for the old focus on the camera there. Not. I'm not able to look at the screen and look at this close work. I'm going to have to uh, rejig something in the new year, I think. I do have a sort of, it's a bit weird, I actually have a better camera that has a more active autofocusing system. It's the uh, later version of this camera and I bought that camera before this one. But I've really got used to using this camera uh, in my setup and the ir irony is they're really similar. It's the sort of GH3 and GH4 cameras are almost identical. Um, but it's weird, you just, you get used to using one and uh, you just don't want to touch it. So you're like your little favorite right at the moment. Okay, we're nearly there. So we've got a bunch of 1Ks to put in, which I'm assuming are these. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And on the PCB, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's pretty damn sweet, but we can just populate all of those. Nine resistors. I like the, uh, I think I can see what the LEDs are for, by the way. Can you see? Because they're between the modules, the LEDs there and there, they're like the little dots you get on a clock, aren't they? The sort of indicators, you know, they sort of flash between uh, separating all of the digits. And I guess that's a simple way of doing it rather than, you know, messing around too much you know, with getting some sort of expensive, more expensive seg seven segment display made for clocks, for example, you can just add some additional LEDs. But I will think it is a bit weird because they're gonna be uh, quite bigger, big uh, LED dots compared to the ones that you'd get on the actual seven segment, but it doesn't really matter. I think I know as well where this sort of kit might go. I do know someone at the moment who's quite obsessed with clocks. So perhaps I can just sort of put this into a little enclosure or a block of wood 
a block of hardwood and say, here you go, it's a retro, retro clock. It's a sort of timepiece for your IKEA kitchen. And they'd be uh, really happy with that. They'd say, yeah, that looks, that looks right neat, man. That looks right neat, yeah. Thanks, our lad. Of course, uh, they're probably not gonna talk like that because I'm not very good at accents and I'm not even sure what accent what that was. I think it was an accent from someone from Viz Comics. Like Biffa Bacon or something. Come on, almost there. These are the worst, but we're nearly there. Although, probably what's worse is trying to figure out what the last two resistors are in terms of their values, because you know I really don't like doing that. But there's only a 10K and a 5.1K left, so I'll just have to buzz only one of those out with my multimeter, and uh, we'll be golden. We will be golden. All right, very gingerly turning it over. <laughs> and I, as I did it, I saw about four of them just drop, so we know that they're going to be need repositioning. So I'm just going to tack, tack solder them. Because, you know, I'm not trying to do this against the clock or anything. That one had a really tiny pad, that resistor. Strange. Makes me wonder if I had it in the right hole. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do here. Excuse the focus, guys, because it's... Uh, close your eyes for a second, because it's going to go blurry, I'm sure, because I'm trying to... Uh, I can't even focus my own eyes on this, never mind the camera. I shall have to get a focus puller, so uh, if anybody wants to be the uh, back office focus puller and sit there adjusting focus continuously for me on my videos, I'm uh, definitely up for that. We can uh, invent a remote streaming focus puller system, which uh, I pretty kind of think I could. Um, you're welcome to uh, jump in at any time and start focusing. There we go. Got them. And they're all pretty much down. That's fine by me. Let's just hack all the legs off. Nom, 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 nom. A lot of nomming. Crikey. It off. Think of just when things were made like this, all by hand. There was some serious, bit more value, you know, because somebody actually had to make them. There's a bit, bit of a touch-up needed on this leg here. I'm not that happy. In fact, I'm just going to try to poke it through a bit. It's a bit weird. I'm not even sure it's uh, worked, but we'll see. Let me debug it. So we've just got two resistors there left. Got my multimeter underneath my pile of junk. Just sort of randomly going through the modes over and over and over again till I figure out which ones I want. 4.9K. Well, there's a 5.1K, so that's that one. Close enough. Not sure which is out though. Don't know if my, it's my meter or if it's my, if it's the resistors themselves. They do come with a sort of tolerance band, but, uh, or intolerance band. Close enough, I think, close enough. This isn't running at super gigahertz speeds, you know, in a Cray supercomputer, calculating the weather across the UK. It's gonna just flash an LED. Those look good. We're really, really cooking now. We're almost there, almost there. Let's get this terminal in for our power. Don't put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that would have been embarrassing the wrong way around. Stay. Get the soldering iron on there while I'm gearing myself up. It's looking good. Perfection. Two of these. Do we have two? Yes, we do. Ground and out. In and ground. This is really weird. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if you can maybe daisy chain these things. That's sort of, it's fascinating. Fascinating, Jim. 
see what I did there with the tweezers. Get a little bit of a trick technique there to keep this uh, in place while I was getting ready to sort of solder it in. In and ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking here. I've, I've sort of chosen ground to be this left one, but on this one it's the other way around. So I'm going to put the connector in this way round so that it's still the same keying. So ground is always on the uh, particular side. So let's see if we can get these done. Solder one on one side, solder one on the other. Oop. That's looking good. That's looking fine. Just got the buzzer now. Remove seal after washing. Well, I'm not going to wash it, so I think it's going to be good to go. Pop that in. Now the LEDs, and as per usual, I never really remember what the LED sort of symbol is, which which leg it is, and I, I always think it's short leg negative. Um, but I always feel ob obliged to just sort of look it up on the internet every single time because I just absolutely forget. Um, yeah, I've just got some circuits in front of me. Anode, cathode, short leg negative, yeah? Short leg negative, why can this just not stick in my mind? Short leg negative. Short leg negative. It says positive and negative on the PCB. Short leg negative. What's nice is I was sort of talk, doing a lot of talk about the LED side. Uh, uh, but the LEDs themselves are actually reasonably small, so they shouldn't look too out of place, I think, on this side. Um, I know the LEDs drop down. I'm going to try a little trick of pulling them up with the tweezers. Yeah, that might, that might work. So maybe try that. If you've got some tweezers, you could just use them to sort of make sure those components are nice and... You know, sitting nicely back to where you intend them to be. Um, don't do what I just did, which is kind of make the LED go in bent. Ah, oh, that went in bent as well. You know what? Life's too short. That doesn't work. Just put your finger, put your finger on the back of the PCB. Push the component in. Done. I think we're nearly there, you know. And I'm I'm three minutes over apparently, so not quite where I wanted to be time-wise. But then there was a preamble actually, wasn't there? before I started building this. So if you remove the talking time, I think there's a good chance that was a half an hour build. So good. Uh, let's call it half an hour, guys. What do you think? Half an hour to build or half an hour to get it working? Okay, try not to bend the legs anymore because I already have just bent a few of them getting this in. Why am I rushing? It's like, I, why, why am I really constraining myself with this time? So here's my power supply. Turn it on, volts out, set to sort of five volts. Um, quite nice screw terminals really for one of these projects, isn't it? Power is actually on. I do have the power on, which uh, just to save myself a few few moments of time. Oh, it happened. Did you see that? It's all happening. I'm going to just turn off the old soldering iron because it does make a bit of a racket. Right. Wow, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it does appear to be running. How it works, though be anybody's guess. I'm just going to put the voltage up just a touch, just to make sure it's over 5. Let's turn it off. Turn it on. Ding, ding. Ah, it's running. And I don't know if you can quite see it there, but yeah. So it's ticking away. I'm trying, I'm just sort of pushing these buttons, trying to figure out what it's doing.
So this this looks like it's adjusting the uh, minutes there, or is that hours? Yeah, no, this would be the minutes. That's the seconds. That's the hours. This button seems to be adjusting the hours. But it's weird because when you press it, you get something going on on this screen as well. And there we go. So yeah, I suppose that does set it. That's a it's a weird old way actually. I think it's got different modes. Oh look, it's, it has. So that's time. This looks like maybe some sort of countdown timer. Look, do you see the numbers going through? That is really odd. Look at that. Oh wow, there was a definitely a sort of timer going on there. Whoa. Wow. Right. So, SHE878, that's the sort of number on the kit. LK03267, that's the PCB. Um, it does appear to have sort of zoned out for a moment, but that's probably just my wiring. Uh, yeah, brilliant. So, there's the kit, there's the instructions, and we'll have a look again on here. This is the SH-E878 kit. It does seem to be some sort of timer with alarm with three buttons. Um, externally, you may well be able... This is the power circuitry, actually. I'm just trying to see where those hookups are for the external thing. Uh, yeah, not sure. In fact, these do look like the external ports there. So there is some sort of external triggers here. In and ground. I mean... I don't know. Let's just try to short these two out to happens. Ah. So that makes it buzz. Out will probably short it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't know what that is. That one may well be switched output to something else. So maybe when it gets to zero, it will trigger a relay. That's probably what it is. Yeah. So there you go. Hope that's been of some use to you. Hopefully you're still with me and still awake. If you've liked this video, please click like. Um, subscribe if that's you know if you're any way inclined to do that. And please feel free to comment down below, especially if you've made this kit and you know a little bit about it. Definitely is an Atmel uh, CPU, by the way. We've just have a look at it. Little Atmel microcontroller. Yeah, that's a jolly, jolly nice kit. As ever, thank you for watching.